Blair White, YouTuber, researcher, writer, and influencer. Such integrity. Jeffree Star, who a lot of you guys know and trust, called him out on Twitter in a very direct way. So trustworthy. She's gone back and forth competing with men and women based on I don't know what. So honest. It doesn't really warrant a whole tweet. It doesn't really warrant anything like that, but I'll put it on my story tonight. Blair White is a YouTuber that started creating content back in 2015. She covers politics and very serious topics such as exposing really bad people. This creates a very interesting audience as half seem to be there for her YouTuber exposés and the other half seem to be there to support her political beliefs, which are… yeah. Was that a moment for you? Nevertheless, Blair has garnered quite the following, mostly from her exposés, as she is approaching nearly 1 million subscribers at the time of recording this video. With that many followers and viewers, it's clear that she should be held to a high standard and seen with great integrity, right? I mean, she is smart enough to gain such a level of success on this platform, after all. I'm here to tell you today that this may not be the case. This video is going to discuss why you should not trust Blair White from spreading misinformation in several videos, stealing people's jokes. I'd prefer prison. That can be your community, the prison community. I think they more so belong in the prison community. And thumbnails, blatantly lying to her fans about people so they will attack them on her behalf and scamming her fans out of money. Allegedly. Thank you, Matthew, who says, don't know if you mentioned it already. I've joined a bit late, but are you going to the Minds event? Also, you should go online with Crowder. Um, I don't know about the Minds event right now. I really have to think about it. I'll know by tonight, though, if I'm going. And, um... I'll put it on my Instagram story. I remember checking her Instagram and Snapchat stories constantly that night because my $250 depended on it. I did not see a single post on any of her social media officially stating whether or not she was going. Blair has proven to be the most untrustworthy and incompetent content creator on this website. She has proven to have an inability to provide any effort or research in her videos. And at times, she even blatantly lies and manipulates her audience. And at other times, the research is so bad that it's almost impossible to believe that she didn't purposefully take out information to over-sensationalize and clickbait a topic, or to benefit by pandering to somebody. By the time this video is over, you should see why you should take everything that comes out of Blair's mouth with a grain of salt. So let's get to the elephant in the room first. The incident that happened in April. I've made two videos on this topic, which I will link down below, but in case you were unfamiliar, here's a short summary of what happened. In April, Blair White took clips out of a video that I made on Davi Vanity and Jeffree Star. In the first minute of my video, I showed how Jeffree Star called Davi Vanity a child and a brother, but then a year later called Davi Vanity his brother and collaborated with him again. In Blair's video, she had taken out all of the parts about Jeffree Star and pandered to him instead. Jeffree Star, who a lot of you guys know and trust, called him out on Twitter in a very direct way. Despite still using my clips for Davi Vanity, so naturally I called her out on it. The most notable thing in the first few seconds of the clip I am about to show you is where I talk about not caring if I received credit or not. I do not care if you use any of my video clips, whether it be me talking or any video clips I found researching for my topic in your videos without crediting me. I don't care. I don't give a shit if I get credit for it. I just want the message out there. That's what's important to me. This is pretty stupid. Yes, I used your video to obtain a live stream from Davi that I couldn't find elsewhere. I was trying to call out a you seriously want credit? Way to prove it's more about clout for you than holding someone responsible. I don't care. I don't give a shit if I get credit for it. I just want the message out there. That's what's important to me. You seriously want credit? I don't care. I don't give a shit if I get credit for it. Way to prove it's more about clout for you than holding someone responsible. Triple stamp a double stamp. You can't triple stamp a double stamp, Lloyd. You can't triple stamp a double stamp. Lloyd, Lloyd. Side note, she wouldn't have even known if that live stream was in my video unless she watched my video. But let's continue. We had a long back and forth on Twitter. She insulted me, literally called me insane, and had the audacity to belittle me in DMs while also claiming that I was in fact the one insulting her. All of the while having many fans of her believe what she said in this tweet without even just listening to the first three seconds of my video. I don't want to set the world on fire. 
they scrolled right past it, took what she said as gospel, and attacked me. Which is really funny because that is exactly what she does for almost every single one of her videos. She over-sensationalizes topics and uses clickbait titles after doing about 20 minutes worth of research. She doesn't care who she walks all over as long as it means she gets an opportunity in the spotlight. Like the time she made a video about a drag queen being a pr but throughout the entire video she showed clips and pictures of the wrong person or how she called Tiffany Michelle Moore a pr for being a transgender woman and taking pictures with her son. For some reason, this was creepy to Blair, but she herself said that there wasn't enough evidence to prove that this person wasn't a predator. It was just super suspicious because this picture was taken on a bed. Also messaged me with concerns over photos of Tiffany and Tiffany's boyfriend, someone out there for everyone, apparently, uh, wearing f colors around the sun, posting really weird photos of the sun, laying in his crotch while he's wearing women's panties. Yeah. So all of that's really concerning as well as a bunch of photos of Tiffany seemingly posing very seductively in bed with the kid and like you don't want to attribute something, you know, nefarious that isn't necessarily there. But when you couple it with all the other things and color and the weird picture where the kid is in between the lap and the women's pants. No, it's just very suspect and I'm not making any direct accusations here, but I think it's something worth looking at. But oh geez, sound the alarms. That's enough content for Blair to make a sensationalized video calling this person a for views. Hey, you know what? Maybe she should be friends with I'm Alex. And then, of course, we get to the newest incident, where Blair makes a video claiming that Janae Marie Kroc, a transgender athlete and power lifter, was competing against women in lifting, which was a blatant lie. <laughs> Blair reads an Instagram post from Janae to her audience in this video. He is that Janae actually went back post-transition and competing against men just because, I guess. Like, it was kind of like... She's gone back and forth competing with men and women based on I don't know what. But as you notice, she doesn't scroll all the way down. If you go to that Instagram post and scroll past where Blair read, you can see that Janae actually clarifies in that same post in Blair's video that she read to her audience that she in fact is not competing against women in lifting and does not have any plans to do so. But that's not the point. The bigger point is <laughs> the idea, the concept of Janae competing against biological women is ludicrous. It's almost intentionally ignorant. And anyone who thinks that that is some sort of level playing field is a liar. <laughs> you're lying to her, you're lying to others, and you're lying to yourself, sweetie. You lied about the entire thing. And then she got dogpiled and she got hate because of something that you literally took less than an hour to research. Many people began criticizing Blair for this, including her own fans. However, she ignored countless criticisms, including Janae's, for two whole weeks until the outrage was amplified and she began losing lots of subscribers over it. How are you smart enough to get yourself almost a million subscribers, yet you can't even read an entire Instagram post? Just like with my video, where according to your own claims, you couldn't be f to watch the entire thing despite it being something that you were using and reporting on. She either filmed it herself, reading this entire post for her video, and then halfway through said, nah, that's good enough without glancing at the rest of the paragraph, or she did see it, but she couldn't use that part of the post to benefit in her sensationalizing this topic, so she chose to leave it out. I do have an opinion as to which one it is, but I cannot prove that, so I will say whether it's one, the other, or a little bit of both, this is terrible. You either are a careless content creator or you're a careless content creator. Take your pick. One is not better than the other in this case. They are both terrible. This is the same exact thing I said in April. It's funny how it's an entirely different situation, but the outcome remains the same. But if you think this pattern of lying, laziness, and incompetence ends here, I'm sorry to inform you that you are sadly mistaken. You see, it gets even worse worse. This one happened quite a while ago, but wasn't brought to my attention until around the time that I made my first video on Blair. Last year, Blair posted a video titled, The Truth About My Racist Past, where she addresses all sorts of accusations, but the most interesting one is this. So here's another photo of people love digging up from 2016, a photo of me apparently in blackface. Only it's not blackface. 
It's a beauty treatment. It's a mud mask. It's a face mask. How actually mentally deficient do you have to be to think that I would unabashedly even post a black face picture? This face mask specifically is from Bosha or it's Boschia. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's this mask I used to wear all the time from Sephora. It didn't work. It broke me out. Buh. It's just so ridiculous. And it's even more ridiculous that people have the nerve to misrepresent someone like that. And I am not making this video to apologize because I have nothing to apologize for. Now you'll see here that yeah, okay, that's definitely a charcoal face mask that checks out. But the thing is, people weren't calling her out for posting a photo of herself in a charcoal face mask like she says they were. In this video, she does a great job at making this situation sound ridiculous, especially since people do use these masks for their skin quite a lot. You see, despite what she wants you to believe, that wasn't the issue at all. The issue was that she posted this image to Twitter with this caption. Blair Black, intersexual trans feminist, depressed, mentally ill, hashtag Black Lives Matter, non-binary dragonkin. Huh, that's funny. She, uh, she left that part out of the video, didn't she? Why did she crop out the Blair Black, hashtag Black Lives Matter part of that tweet in her video? Did she not notice that that was in there too? Just like how she didn't notice all of the other things she took out of her videos? Lastly, I want to get into what I think is one of the biggest issues that Blair has been involved in, and I have seen nobody, not a single person, talk about this. In fact, the only reason I even know about this is because part of this was my own experience. I will admit at one point I did enjoy some of Blair White's videos along with shoe on heads. I really didn't care for her political content, but I respected her for bringing light to very problematic people like Onision and Jessica Yaniv. On August 31st, 2019, there was a convention that took place in New Jersey called Minds IRL by a company called Myth Informed. Now, I can't recall most of the people set to attend this event other than Blair White and Shoe on Head, and I wasn't all that interested in the conferences that were supposed to take place, but I've always wanted to go to a convention and meet some of the YouTubers I like, and at the time, VidCon or Playlist Live were totally out of the question for me. So I spent $250 on two tickets to attend this event, one for myself and one for my boyfriend. Also, I can see and support Shoe and Blair. Fast forward a little bit, where the event date was inching closer, many people began making threats to the location of this event, and it was definitely seeming a little bit dangerous to attend. The coordinators even had to relocate the event because it was getting so out of hand. Weeks prior to the event, she and her boyfriend at the time made a public post stating that they would not be attending due to the circumstances, and honestly, that was totally fine. From what I remember, other people that were part of the event also made statements that they were dropping out as well. Blair, however, did not make a statement, and the event itself was not canceled. The event was getting closer and closer, and the stress was was increasing. Blair still did not post anything on any of her social medias regarding the event. And then on August 29th, just two days before the event was supposed to take place, Blair hosted a live stream on her YouTube channel titled, We Need to Talk. Note that there was nothing in her title or in her description that stated anything regarding the event, and there were also no tags. Several people sent her super chats in the stream, myself included, asking her if she was still attending Minds in New Jersey, which was again happening just two days after this took place. Thank you, The Raw Truth. It says, Blair, please go to mine. It's such a big part of why I'm going. <laughs> See, comments like that make me want to just get on the plane and go. I'll try. Thank you, Matthew, who says, don't know if you mentioned it already. I've joined a bit late, but are you going to the Minds event? Also, you should go on live with Crowder. Um, I don't know about the Minds event right now. I really had to think about it. I'll know by tonight, though, if I'm going. Every time she answered, she alluded to the idea that she wasn't going to go. But throughout the entire stream, she couldn't make up her mind, she did not give a definite decision, and she said she was even going to try to go. Eventually, she ends the stream after reading out her last super chat, again being about the Minds event. I just want to make it clear that nobody should have to pay for her to answer a question about going to an event that so many people paid for just to see her at. People spent hundreds of dollars to go to this event, many of which were going just to see her. I know I was not the only one. Thank you, The Raw Truth. It says, Blair, please go to Mines. It's such a big part of why I'm going. So for her to cancel without announcing it is, um, 
kind of scammy. People should not have to pay her to find out whether or not she's going to an event that they're paying for. She ended the stream saying, I don't know if I'm going or not, and she promised that she would put an update in her Instagram story later that night, letting everybody know her decision on whether or not she was going to attend. I'll know by tonight though, if I'm going. And um, I'll put it on my Instagram story. It doesn't really warrant a whole tweet, doesn't really warrant anything like that, but I'll put it on my story tonight. Now listen, I know I can't prove if something didn't happen. I cannot prove that someone did not post an Instagram story, especially if it was over a year ago. So in this case, whether or not you take my word for this is entirely up to you. But I will say that I remember checking her Instagram and Snapchat stories constantly that night because my $250 depended on it. I did not see a single post on any of her social media officially stating whether or not she was going. Only the live stream that wasn't even titled with the event in mind, which was unlisted shortly after. The day after her stream, I remember seeing no posts on any of her social media either. At that point, I wasn't going to take the chance, so I decided to ask the organizers for a refund. They were so kind enough to give me my money back, which I am so lucky for because not not every company will do that. In fact, a lot of events will not give you a refund unless you have ticket insurance. So I was very, very grateful. And I'm really glad I did get my refund because Blair never showed up to that event. And I wanna say it right now, this message is just for Blair in case she tries to say, you're mad because I didn't go to an event that was dangerous, you're so entitled. No, it's perfectly fine that you didn't go to this event. Several people opted out of it. It's just the problem is that you didn't inform your audience about it. Only a fraction of your audience even watched your live stream, and by not posting it on any social media, you're not giving the opportunity for anybody else to get a refund that was going specifically to see you. With that being said, to this day, I have no idea how many people ended up showing up to this convention with the hopes of seeing and possibly meeting Blair. People who spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars thinking that she was going to show up to this event, not only wasting their money, but also their time. And even if she did post a story, which I am confident that she didn't, considering that I checked almost every hour for an update, that is still inadequate. If you have fans who have paid hundreds of dollars to see you at an event with a discount in your name and you have to bail from that event, you better post about it on all of your social media for your fans so they can get a refund if they so choose. A live stream saying maybe and an Instagram story that I'm certain never happened would not be enough. I'll put it on my Instagram story. It doesn't really warrant a whole tweet doesn't really warrant anything like that but i'll put it on my story tonight in my opinion, this definitely classifies as a scam. Personally, I'm glad I ended up not going to this thing anyway. I was able to keep my money and do something even more fun instead of wasting it on somebody who can't even finish reading a paragraph under somebody's Instagram post for a video. I hope that this is eye-opening for you if you are a supporter of Blair White. I can't even get into how many people dragged me for coming out against Blair White for misrepresenting clips from my video about Davi Vanity so she could pander to Jeffree Star. And when I came out and said, hey, this is a big mistake. You shouldn't be doing this. I really don't appreciate you doing this. She spinned it around and said, oh, what did you want, credit? Did you want clout? I'm here trying to help survivors and victims in this situation and you just want clout? How dare you? That's disgusting. You're insane. Nothing feels better than saying I told you so. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. And also thank you so much to Lewis and Miss Tanisha for being my biggest supporters on Patreon. I really, really appreciate your support. If you wanna check out my Patreon, the link is down below. I try to get videos out early to you guys over on there. Thank you so very much and I will see you later.